Hello, my name is Kyle, and welcome to the channel. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about The Little Mermaid and what's been going on with it. I'm sure by now you've seen some things on Facebook all over the place, which is why I didn't want to do anything on this because I frankly don't care. However, I dug in a little deeper and I saw a tweet of a person who said three reasons why this is not racism. And it makes perfect sense. I'm going to go over those three reasons. I totally agree with them. I'm going to give a fourth reason of that, but I noticed that there was over 1 million dislikes were, were given in about a day. And I was like, that's kind of strange. So I was curious, what is that like today? So I went over to Disney's site and I actually looked at it. And now you see it's 2.5 million dislikes to 1 million likes. And you may be asking, Kyle, how do you know that? And how can you see that? Because YouTube got rid of the dislikes, right? Well, they did, but there's a way to look at those. I'll leave a link below for that particular information. But be mindful when you do that, make sure you refresh the video each time. Otherwise, you'll get misleading results. It keeps the history before. So do a refresh and you will get the accurate total of what this is. So with that being said, this is astonishing that at 2.5 million dislikes after two days and 1 million in one day. Let's first talk about the dislikes. Why did YouTube get rid of dislikes? Well, they got rid of dislikes, in my opinion, because of this right here. This guy, one of the latest videos of Joe Biden. And you see here, the ratio is 138 to 661 likes to dislikes. And that's one of the reasons why. And if you go to YouTube and look at their actual official statement, they say this because creators are being embarrassed and also because there's targeted attacks by bots, of course, to, you know, do that and to cause controversy. And they said that when they got rid of the dislike, that thing went down. Here's the official response or reaction or fact checked approved response from PolitiFact. I'll leave that here for you just so I can be fair and balanced. So that being said, the first reason because I think this film is being disliked is because it is a remake. How many people are tired of remakes? Show of hands. Yeah, I don't see too many people out there with their hands up. So I'm going to just say this movie is a remake and people are going to dislike it just on those merits alone. OK, what about the Beauty and the Beast remake? It was terrible, in my opinion. The Cinderella remake, I didn't see. Got decent reviews. I heard it was OK, so maybe it was. But then that was like the first one. Then you go on to Mulan. You know, that was a total disaster. And Disney is just doing this and people are seeing it as a cash grab of taking IP material, intellectual properties, and just rehashing them over and over again because it's easy because corporations are just being lazy and the writing is terrible and they know that they have a built in audience and all of that and it's less risky. I get it. It's a business, but people nonetheless are tired of it. So yeah, it's a remake means people won't like it. And the number two reason why people are hitting the dislike button on this, I think, is because it is a live action remake. People are tired of these live action remakes. These were animated films and people remember them as animated films and people want to see them as animated films. Simple as that. That's a good reason why people would dislike this film. And the third reason is because it's woke. Obviously, I mean, come on. So people are just tired of this. And I'll get into this aspect of it a little bit later. But the whole point of it being woke and the whole agenda, people do not like to have that force fed down them. And I will say this. People like to see films that are original with original characters. And personally, I will say this, my opinion, if you are part of a victim class, so-called victim class society or group or whatever you want to call yourselves, and you're all suddenly put into a character like a James Bond or Spider-Man or Superman, what's that saying about that particular person? Are they doing it on their own merits or are they doing it because it's Spider-Man, James Bond or Superman? A perfect example of material that would be good to have is something like Ripperverse, which is a comic book starring a black character and a female, I guess, side character, their team. But that would be normally a great thing, right? Well, not if the person and the story are conservative in nature. The owner is a conservative. And yeah, so they were canceled because of that. So really, it's more than just the actual complexion or victimhood class that you're in, it's about your values. And that's what people don't like. They see through it. And even the gateway pundit said it here perfectly in the beginning. This is one major sign the woke are losing the culture war. Despite progressive domination of entertainment, big tech and the media and the truth 
about the failure of woke projects can no longer be kept hidden. The backlash of fans overwhelms all efforts at censorship and hype. In other words, people are seeing through it. You remember the disasters like Terminator Dark Fate or Ghostbusters 2016 or Wonder Woman 1984 or The Last Jedi or Charlie's Angels 2019 or Men in Black 2019? Those are all reminders of cases that nearly destroyed those franchises. In fact, destroyed some of them. Actually, Ghostbusters survived because they were able to do a remake, which basically retconned the entire other film that we didn't like, the one from 2016. But aside from that, the whole point is people are tired of woke. Get woke, go broke is a formula that's playing itself out constantly and continuously and consistently. And so here is the actual tweet that I was mentioning before. The reason why this remake sucks is because number one, it's a remake. Number two, it's a live action. Number three, it's woke. And the reasons that have nothing to do with dislikes are racism. And that brings me to fan baiting. And what fan baiting is, this is from the Critical Drinker on YouTube, is a form of marketing used by producers, film studios, and actors with the intent of exciting artificial controversy, garnering publicity, and explaining away the negative views of a new and often highly anticipated production. This reminds me of Captain Marvel when Rotten Tomatoes actually removed the fan score because they didn't want to show it to people because it was embarrassing. And so these sorts of things get out. After a while, people expect it and then they see it for what it is. And if something even appears to be woke, they're going to dislike it. Look, Little Mermaid could be an amazing film. It could be all kinds of conservative leaning issues there, but people don't care because it looks woke and we've been burned so many different times. It doesn't matter anymore. So it has nothing to do with racism at all. It just has to do with the three things I mentioned before. But I'm going to give you a fourth reason, and that is because it is Disney. And if you know anything about Disney over the past couple of years, you realize that they have been in the news for some pretty woke stuff and an agenda that they've come out with and said directly that they are doing some unsavory things when it comes to creating programming for our children. And so Disney is not very popular right now. And that in and of itself could be the main reason why people aren't going to like this film. In fact, I would submit that anything Disney puts out right now is going to get a strong dislike. Similarly to what would happen if Joe Biden posted a video. And so with that, check out this video we have about Disney and how they lost nearly half of their stock price in just a year.